Welcome back. Today we're going to go ahead and look at the 8-2 assignment together, the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Let's take a look at number two. So the first thing that you have to do is understand the fact that we have a right triangle. So therefore, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse, the side across from the 90 degree angle. So for number two, the C is X. So this can be A, this can be B. I have eight squared plus 12 squared equals X squared. Eight squared is 64, 12 squared is 144, and that is equal to X squared. Now, let me go ahead and add these two numbers up. Let me go get my calculator real fast. So I have 64 plus 144, that is 208, and that is equal to x squared. Let's take the square root on both sides, and I'm like, okay, let me think of two numbers that multiply together where one of them is a perfect square that'll give me 208. So. I'm thinking 16 and 13. See, I have a perfect squared multiplied by some number. 16 times 13 is 208, and that is equal to x, because the square root of x squared is x. So now that I have the square root of 16, well, the square root of 16 is 4. So my answer is 4 root 13, because I can't take the square root of 13. And that's my answer. Number two is four root 13. Okay, so this one here says, determine whether each set of numbers can be the measures of the sides of a triangle. If so, classify the triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. So here in class, we talked about step one and step two. Step one, classify, or sorry, not classify, determine whether the set of numbers can be measures of the sides of a triangle. So if I look at seven, I'm going to write 26, 18, and 16. So I have 26. That's my main character. What are the two numbers not 26? 16 and 18. So do 16 plus 18. Compare that to 26. Is 16 plus 18 greater than 26? Yes. What about 18? 18 is my main character. The numbers I that are not 18 are 16 and 26. And Without having to do the math here, I can see that 26 is greater than 18. So I can go ahead and say yes. And then lastly, let's see. We have 16 here. I'm going to put 18 plus 26. 26 is greater than 16. So that's a check. I can say with these numbers here, they can form a triangle. Okay? But I'm not done. It's asking to, to determine whether the triangle is acute, obtuse, or right. So what do I need to do? I need to do C squared blank A squared plus B squared. Now C will be the longest side. So 26 is the longest side. That's 26 squared right there. And then 16 is A and 18 is B. So I have 16 squared plus 18 squared. So... 26 squared is 676, and then 16 squared plus 18 squared is 580. So compare 676 to 580, which one's greater? 676. So what does this mean? This means that since C squared is greater than the right-hand side, you say that this is an obtuse triangle this is an obtuse triangle so seven uh that's your answer for number seven okay now if c squared is less than if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared what do you say well you say that that's acute now if you say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared then you will say that it is a right triangle. You need to make sure that you show or prove that the following numbers form a triangle, and then you can proceed to step two classification.
Okay, so please make sure that you follow the ordering of uh, the procedure. Okay. Um, solve for x, then find the perimeter and area of each triangle. Use the area form a equals one half base times height, where b is the base and h is the height. The base is the segment that is perpendicular to the height, and vice versa. Right, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So you can see that this segment here is perpendicular to this segment. So with those two segments, you can figure out what your base and your height are. Or, you know, this this is my base and this is my height. Really, it doesn't really matter which one's the base or which one's the height, especially for this problem because you're multiplying. It doesn't matter. B times H is the same thing as H times B. So, but the, the most important thing here is that you know which one's the hypotenuse and which one's the base and which one's the height and all that sort of thing. Okay. So please make sure that you know, which one's which for, you know, you know, talking about the hypotenuse and such. Uh, so let's do 12. I think 12 is a little bit more challenging than 10. It says, okay, I need to find the area of this triangle. And we know that this is the hypotenuse. And over here, this is my height. Or no, I'm just kidding. This is my base. Let's call that my base. And this is my height. Okay. Or if you want, you can call this the height and call this the base. Again, it does not matter as long as you know this is the hypotenuse. So first of all, I can't figure out the area of this because I need to find, you know, how long the base is. So to do that, I do a squared plus b squared equals c squared and i'm gonna let this be a and i'm gonna let that be b we know that this is the hypotenuse that's c so i have x squared plus 33 squared equals 66 squared okay what am i solving for i'm solving for, the, for that x squared so x squared plus what's 33 squared so let me let me put that in the calculator 33 squared is 1800 1089 so we have 1089 which is equal to what's 66 squared that's 4356 okay so have x squared plus 1089 equals 4356 so now i'm going to subtract both sides by 1089 so x squared is equal to 3200 and 3267 so People would be tempted to do the buddy system here where they break it down, use the factor tree method, blah, blah, blah. But the nice thing about this problem is that you can round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Okay, so if I take the square root on both sides, in fact, I'm just going to show you with my calculator here. So if I take the square root of 3,267 and I hit enter, boom, you get 57.2. Because look at that. Where's the tenths place? It's after that decimal right there. So that one is going to turn into a two because that five dictates what happens to that one. Okay, so X is equal to 57.2. Now, if X is equal to 57.2, I can plug it into my area formula. Area equals one half. The base is 57.2 times the height, 33. And y'all, I can actually just put that in my calculator really, really easily. Uh, I do 57.2 times 33 and hit enter. Okay, you got that number there. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. I'm going to divide that by 2. And your area is 943.2. Okay, and let me see. What happens if I didn't round from the beginning? Let's say I did the square root of 3,267 times 33. So I'm going to do that. 3,260, oops, sorry. So, uh, second, this 3,267 times, times 33. Divide that by 2. And I get 943.10. Or I can say, or 
or if you do a equals one half base times height and that is equal to one half of the square root like let's say you didn't take the square root and get that decimal you're just using the actual number there you can do the square root or one half times the square root of 3267 i need more room here times the height times the height which is 33 and then again with my calculator i showed you that okay i did the square root of 3267 times 33 that's you know 1886.20 blah 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 and you take that answer divide that by two you get 943.10 so or it's equal to 943.10 okay and you can see on the key, that's the answer there, but I will accept however you wanna do it. It does not matter, I really don't care. Okay, so that is number 12. Let's look at 13, and then we can do maybe 15. 14, I'll let you do on your own. So I have x, x plus five and 25, where 25 is the longest side. And we know we're dealing with a right triangle here. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A is, you know, x. So x squared plus x plus five quantity squared equals 25 squared. I don't need the parentheses. So x squared plus x plus five times x plus five is x squared plus 10 x plus 25 equals 625 how many x's are there well there are two x's so 2x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 625 and this looks like it's, this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c where there's something on the right hand side of the equation so when you're solving you need to make sure that the other side is zero so I have 2x squared plus 10x um, minus 600 equals zero. So then I can factor this trinomial because, you know, two goes into two, two goes into 10, and two goes to negative 600, and sec uh, just negative 600. So I'm gonna factor the two out. I get x squared plus 5x minus 300, okay? So then, calculator trick, figure out what your a b and c are a is 1 b is 5 and c is negative 300 so you will do negative 300 divided by x and you do negative 300 divided by x plus x second graph and then figure out where the b value is on y2 so See if we can find it. Oh, there it is. There's five, right? So your two factors are x minus 15 times x plus 20 equals zero. Okay, and if you want, you can do the x method, but this it's really hard to figure out what those um what those factors are. It's negative 15 and 20. So if I'm solving this is going to be x equals 15, and this is going to be x equals negative 20. We want the positive x value, so x is your answer. We have the negative x value, or you're going to have a negative side length, which you do not want at all. You want the positive one, so x is equal to 15. Okay, so that's how you do number 13. All right, uh, 14, I'm just looking at this right now. This is basically... You can use your notes for that look at your notes there's a similar problem uh, on the notes that you can look at to answer number 14. Uh, 15 i'll give you a hint a television is identified by the diagonal measurement of the screen a television has 36 inch screen whose height is 22 inches what is the base of the television screen so a television is identified by the diagonal measurement of the screen so this is a 36 inch tv Okay, and we know that this is a rectangle, so everything is right, but I'm just put one right angle there, because why not? Uh, the height is 22, what the heck is the base? So we do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and we're gonna say that A 
is 22. So 22 squared. And then B is the base, so B squared is equal to 36 squared. So if I subtract both sides by 22 squared, I get B squared equals 36 squared minus 22 squared. Um, let me see. Okay, so I'm looking at the answer key. We're going to put that as a decimal. So if I do, if I take the square root on both sides, I do second square root 36 squared minus 22 squared. And hit enter and you get 28.5 inches, 28.5 inches. Okay, so 28.5 inches is your answer. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, I can think you can do, I'm gonna assume that you can do 16. I'm gonna assume that you can do 17. 18 is weird, but look at this. We know that this side here is nine and this side here is 12. The hypotenuse is X. So what the heck are these triangles? Like, don't, don't even worry about those triangles. That's, those are there to fool you. So you're really just trying to solve for uh, the hypotenuse, which is X. So I do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, A is, let that be nine, so nine squared. B is 12 squared. And that's equal to C squared. We'll call that X squared. And then you can go ahead and figure out what X is equal to. Okay. So you can figure out what X is equal to that one. And then over here. Okay. So this thing, don't let that fool you. Like imagine this is not even here. Focus on this right triangle. You have, you have 14, you have X and you have 10. And you can go ahead and figure that out on your own. It looks like we can use a decimal for that once to go for it. Use a Pythagorean triple to find X. Refer to your notes. Or look at the notes video. Okay. Um, 21, 23, and 25. I can tell you that they form a triangle. You're going to prove that. And remember, C squared blank A squared plus B squared. Now, if C squared is equal to a squared plus b squared then it's a right triangle if c squared is greater than it's obtuse if c squared is less than it is acute so please 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 make sure that you understand how to do those problems and then let's see um i think you can do this i think you can do that 43 is weird let's take a look at this i think this is more of a you have to do pythagorean theorem twice because look at that we have two separate triangles here you know joined as uh, one figure we call that a composite figure um so first of all to figure out what x is you need your a and your b right but we don't have a b here if we're just strictly looking at this triangle we don't have a b here so we first have to figure out the b if we look at this triangle here, we have a side here, a side here, and then this is my hypotenuse of that triangle. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight that. If I can figure that out, we know that this is a right triangle, so I can say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now I'm gonna let that be a. I'm gonna let this be b. And then c squared is c squared, because we don't know what that is. Root seven squared, by the way, that is seven, plus three squared is nine equals c squared okay that's 16 equals c squared so c is equal to four so this this here this here is four right so if i draw that triangle out and this is four this is three this is x you're gonna do a squared plus b squared equals c squared and go ahead and plug uh those values in and solve for the desired variable I'll let you do that on your own okay or look at your notes. If you look at your notes, you can probably figure out the answer really, really quickly. 
All right, and then 14, okay, uh, I think what I'm planning to do with this problem is I'm going to read the problem, draw the picture, and then you're going to figure it out, and yes, you'll, you'll use a decimal, it's totally fine, you can use a decimal for this one. Uh, number 44, Clayton is responsible for changing the broken light bulb in a street lamp. Uh, the street lamp is 12 feet high, okay, so the street lamp is 12 feet high and clay uh clayton places the base of his ladder four feet from the base of the street lamp so this is the base of the street lamp and it's four feet away so this is four feet away and then this must be the ladder here okay so this this is the ladder i don't think i'm gonna draw a double line just i'm gonna draw a regular right triangle so i have 12 i have four now it says that Clayton can extend his ladder from 10 feet to 14 feet. How long must his ladder be to reach the top of the street lamp? So your answer must be between the interval 10 and 14. Okay? So this is a right triangle. Use Pythagorean theorem and then you got it. Toodaloo.